Hi, I'm Frankie. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up error handling for APIs that aren't working in Azure API Management. This series is based on the Azure API Management hands-on lab. If you wanna follow along or do it on your own, you can find a link to it in the description. There are two types of error handling that we'll go over in Azure API Management. The first is using the return response policy where we may want to abort the current processing of a single request that's going on to the backend and return a response immediately to the API consumer. The second is by using the on error section in the policies of an API. We'll use these two snippets of XML code to demonstrate these two types of error handling. I'll include a link to this GitHub gist in the description. To implement our return response policy, we'll go to APIs, API page, We'll go to our basic calculator and then we'll go to divide two integers. Let's add an outbound policy. We'll expand this and we'll grab our snippet and add it in here. What this is doing is that when we get a status code 500, we'll return a response immediately. And instead of just saying internal server error, we let the user know that the error is on our end. Let's save this. Now we'll test this. First, I'll just make sure that it works as it should by dividing four by two, which should equal two. Let's see response of two, that worked. Now let's cause an error. Let's divide by zero. Divided by zero, I should have an error. I can see my internal server error, but with our custom error messaging. The return response policy can be helpful in certain circumstances where you do need to abort the current processing of a backend service API call, but you wanna be careful when you use this because you could fall into the trap of having too much business logic within your Azure API management instance. It's best practice to let your API gateway manage policies and the way your APIs are functioning and let the business logic be reserved to your backend services. Now let's cause an error that will trigger our on error section. I'll grab this XML snippet, which allows us to see the information we have in our on error section. It sets a bunch of headers to give us information about the last error property, which is populated when there is an error. Let's save this. And to create an error on purpose, I'm going to create a fake subscription key in the headers. So I'll grab the name of my header for the subscription key. I'll add it as a header and I'll create just some random characters for the value. This should fail and I should get a 401 unauthorized response. Creating an error Oh, I better add a value to actually do this divide. So four divided by two. And then I create a request with a trace where I get the 401 access denied. And because there is an error, I have all of the error information from the headers that we set because of the on error section. We can also take a look at the trace and look at the on error section to see all these headers that are executed in the on error section. This should help you get started with error handling in Azure API Management. If this video was helpful for you, please like it and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. And if you missed any of the past Azure API Management videos I've put together, you can find some of those here. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.